What's up guys? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good day. Um, today's Saturday. Just kind of chilling, hanging out in the garage. Um, I thought this would actually be a great time to share with you guys kind of like a gear review, long-term review of my uh, front runner rooftop tent. Um, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know, you know, I really do get out there and I camp quite a bit and I use my gear and I, you know, run it through its paces. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to share how this tent specifically has been holding up. So I'll start off by saying if you're new to the rooftop tent market, um, this tent specifically is actually kind of at the lower end uh, cost wise. You can buy a tent like a Smitty built tent, you know, or whatever for about seven, eight hundred dollars. And then they just they jump up from there drastically. You can spend six or seven thousand dollars on a rooftop tent if you really wanted to. Um, but this front runner tent was right around a thousand dollars, which is pretty dang good for what this tent is. So what I'm actually going to do in this video is uh, we're going to walk around and I'll show you guys like the cover and uh, show you how that's been holding up you know to daily driving use so after i show you guys the cover and how that's been holding up what i actually want to do is uh, deploy the tent and then i'm going to set my phone on a tripod and time it and uh, i'm not going to try to set a record or anything of like how fast can i deploy this uh, i'd like to just give you guys like a rough time of you know average time of how long this specific tent takes to set up once we have the tent set up, then I'll show you like all the seams and the stitching and like, you know, things that are holding up, things that are kind of starting to, you know, get weathered. Um, and then I'll actually share a couple little mods that I've done to the actual tent itself. Um, after that, then we'll uh, put the phone back on a tripod and we'll close the tent back up and I'll show you guys uh, how the tent actually closes up and then give you a realistic time of how long that takes. So I know that's a lot there, um, but I really wanna you know, share my learnings and my experiences with this tent um, because I really think it's a cool tent. Let's get to it. Uh, first things first, we'll show you the cover. All right guys, so I apologize on this first clip. Um, I had a lot of wind noise in the audio and it was just really annoying. So um, I need to do a voiceover of this section. Anyway, here's the front of the cover. This probably is the area that gets the most amount um, of damage, I guess you would say. You know, you get a lot of bugs, you get a lot of wind and branches and things just when you're driving. Um, there is a little spot right here that uh, you can tell kind of has a little gouge in it, but it, it's not a hole. There's not water coming through on that side or anything. So uh, that's the, the biggest amount of damage on this entire cover. I will say you can buy replacement covers if you want. Uh, this tent comes with this tan color. Um, you can buy another one that's black and I think they're around $100 to replace. All right, moving on to the side right here. You can see there, you know, there's definitely some scratches from being on the trail. Um, but none of these again are rips, you know, or anything to be concerned about. I have, you know, been on some trails that were really tight and was completely just scratching the crap out of this. Um, but it hasn't ripped at all. All right guys, so this is the last thing I'll show you uh, with the cover. Um, you know, as you can see, it's kind of dirty, but it washes off pretty well. Uh, this is where the ladder is stored, this big bulge right here. And what I didn't realize when I first bought this is that when it rains, uh, you know, this actually creates kind of a divot and water is kind of stored right here. So I found that out the hard way because uh, the very first time I had this tent and it rained, um, I had my windows down and I was pulling out of the driveway and when I turned all of this water fell and just came in the Jeep and fell on my arm and stuff. Um, so just make sure if you, ha if you get this tent when it rains to roll up your windows and that will happen to you. Almost forgot to show you guys, these are the poles that it comes with. So this is what you use to attach the rain fly to the tent. Um, you can remove the rain fly completely and not, uh, you know, obviously not use it. And that means you obviously don't need to use these poles. So what you can do is uh, simply open the tent and that is it. It's already deployed. Um, but usually I like to run the rain fly just because I don't know if it's gonna rain at night. All right guys, now we're gonna deploy the tent and I'm gonna set a timer to make sure, you know, we capture how long this actually takes. I just checked the timer and that took just about four minutes and 30 seconds to set up. Um, and again, I was really just lollygagging. I was not trying to set uh, a record or anything and do it really quick. Uh, like I said a minute ago about the poles, if you don't have this rain fly on, 
you don't have to have the poles. So literally this could take you about a minute to set up if you didn't even do the rain flight. All right, so first thing is first. Um, we'll start at the ladder here. Um, from the beginning, to be honest, I wasn't that impressed with this ladder. Um, it, it honestly feels very cheap. It's very light. I think it's aluminum. Um, and there's only one level of adjustment, which is just this guy right here. Um, you pull this pin out and you only have one um, uh, drilled hole right here to uh, to set the height. Um, and they actually recommend that you don't drill any more holes just because it'll compromise the structural integrity of that. So, um, you know, think about that how you will. Um, I will say that, you know, I'm on 35s. I'm on a pretty good, good amount of lift. Um, and I don't have a lot of angle right here and I kind of wish I had more angle um, Because it's just a little bit difficult to get out of this tent with it so vertical So, you know if it, it was a little longer that would help me out um, But sometimes I'll put like a, a box or a tree stump or a rock or something down there when I'm at camp um, To help that help that angle a little bit moving on to this So this is the floor I guess this would probably be the weakest part about this tent and something I don't like. This is very, you can see the dents in here. Maybe if the reflection hits, there you go, you can see a few. Um, you know, there's quite a bit. So it's kind of weird because this is pretty thin. Um, if you get up there and you're like on your knees and you're not on the mattress, you could easily, easily put a dent in this uh, light floor. So not crazy about that. But if you're on the mattress, you're not going to, you know, dent anything like that. The very first mod I did to this was with this cover. So obviously I can't get to my driver's door. Um, so what I did, and this was in the uh, actual first video of me installing this, what I did was I put some Velcro uh, right here and right here. And uh, I'll do a, a little video clip real quick of me um, rolling this up because I found a really cool way to store this uh, cover. So what you can do with this cover is you just kind of fold it kind of like this and all you do is roll it up. So now that I have it rolled up, what you actually can do now is use one of the Velcro straps that um, was on the cover to begin with. So I put some Velcro right here, like I said, and all you do is make a little loop right here and you can get this cover up and out of the way. So that makes it to where I can open this door, you know, no problems. Um, obviously you don't have to do this, you know, especially if you don't have a door right here, you can just let it hang, but uh, I think it looks a little bit neater that way. So next thing, the exterior of this, um, obviously this is uh, the rain fly, this tan piece. There's plenty of airflow that kind of goes through there um, and it doesn't actually rest on the tent. So if you get any kind of water condensation uh, on the rain fly, it's not going to actually touch your tent. Um, I will say I have been in a absolute torrential uh, you know, thunderstorm, several storms and, and rain and things like that. And I've never gotten any water in this thing. Um, so I've been very impressed about that. If you do take the rain fly off, uh, in the ceiling there, um, it's completely cut out and just kind of, there's like a bug screen. So you can see the star. It's pretty sweet. All right. So right here, hopefully you can see a little bit better view of how the rain fly is actually, uh, attached to this tent. So there's just a few, um, aluminum poles that fit into these sleeves and uh, if you did want to remove it all you do is take out that buckle on this side and that side and you know obviously you take the poles out and uh, that's really about it there's a couple velcro straps and uh, then it'll come right off I was in a crazy crazy just windy storm and this thing was violently just getting whipped around so right here hopefully you guys can see that um, there was a seam on uh, right here on the pole and what happened was the wind just you know blew this pole like crazy and right there along the seam it just kind of split it just a little bit about an, about half an inch or so um, so I just got some flex seal um, weatherproof waterproof tape and taped it up and uh, since then I've been in another rainstorm and it hasn't you know let in any water at all if you do get caught in a rainstorm to air out your tent the next day you don't want to keep that wet tent sealed up in there so make sure you air it out all right guys now I'll go ahead and climb up top and we'll show you the inside the, that is the bug screen um, window like I mentioned earlier so if you take your rain fly off you can completely see through that um, you know you got some side windows here uh, each window on this has you know a uh, I don't know what you would call that just a 
regular barrier for like water and stuff and then it actually has a bug screen um, and you can zip both independently all right so here's the mattress um i would say it's decent honestly it, i think it's about two and a half inches of memory foam that it comes with so a little mod i've actually done to this um it, honestly it's comfortable right it's not that bad this is the, the the mattress pad it comes with i think that's two and a half inches like i said and then what I did was I was able to buy another like half inch kind of textured mattress um, and I cut it to size and I stuffed it in this little mattress bag thing um, and was easily able to zip it up. And that just gave me just a little bit more cushion uh, in this mattress pad. I will say if you add this extra layer of mattress like I did, it does make it a little bit more difficult to close this uh, the tent back up. Also, you'll see that most rooftop tents, their mattress actually extends all the way um, and you don't get this like floor space. I really don't like that in this tent, to be honest. Um, this is actually where, you know, if you get up here and just press your knees into this, you'll actually dent this floor. Um, so I really don't like that. I think it's, it's maybe to put shoes or bags or something, but uh, I really wish the mattress went all the way. But uh, anyway, we'll get inside here and check it out. Give you a little... Tour. Um, this right here was what I pointed out earlier of that little rip that I had um, and I just flex sealed it on both sides but uh, it's it's still holding up pretty well you can see right here in the seams what they do is kind of put this I don't know it's like maybe a glue or a tape or something to reinforce those stitches so something I love about this tent is these side windows zip down so far so you can see like the mattress is almost flush to the to the end of the window so you know if it's pretty hot you can get a ton of uh, really good breeze coming through here then on the side you get a couple pockets nothing special at all um there's one right here oh that's my wife's scrunchie that's hilarious and then uh this you get a little velcro strap um i usually put a lantern on there um, there's one right here as well so it's pretty basic in here but you know that's really all you need all right guys well that's about it for the inside of the tent yeah, really just not, you know, not anything special. Uh, it just does the job well. Um, nice and breezy up here, and it definitely beats sleeping on the ground or on a cot. All right, guys, before I time how long this takes to pack up, um, I wanted to share a little bit of kind of some tips and tricks I've learned owning a rooftop tent in general. Um, this is the first one I've ever had, my first experience, um, and I've actually learned some cool things uh, about having a tent that I thought would be helpful. So the first thing that I learned Sorry, this is a very ADD moment. Um, I'm just not used to my quarantine mustache. It's definitely a dirty, dirty mustache. Ah, keeping it. The first thing I learned, uh, and something that is so, so small, but like really important, bring a pee bottle. I know it sounds weird. Bring a bottle to pee uh, when, you're, you're, you know, when you're out in the tent. Um, the last thing you wanna do is get up in the middle of the night and go pee. It sucks. It's pitch black, you have to crawl uh, out of the tent, you have to make that loud zipping sound and you wake up everybody at camp. It's just so annoying. I know that sounds really weird, but there's been a few times where that's happened and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to get out of the tent. I don't want to disturb people, whatever, you know. So what I've done is just bring like a Gatorade bottle or something up there and just, if you have to pee, pee in that thing. Oh, what a snag. Uh, second thing I learned is when you're sleeping, it doesn't matter even if it's like, you know, 30 degrees out. Uh, make sure on the side windows at least, you kind of zip those down and have a little bit of air flow through the tent. What that's gonna do is just provide a way for that condensation to escape. Um, Cause when you're up there breathing, especially if you have another person and then you're breathing, you create a lot of uh, moisture in the air and that can kind of go to the ceiling. And you know, if you're locked up real tight in your tent and there's no air to escape, water can accumulate uh, on the ceiling and drip down, so you don't want that. The next thing I learned, uh, especially for winter camping, was kind of preheating the tent before you go to bed. I know that sounds weird, and it's probably a little extreme to be honest. You know, by the time you, it's very cold, it's like below freezing, and by the time you go to bed, um, all your bedding up there is just so cold. Uh, it's just really cold in the tent and you know, it sucks. So what I like to do is when I'm chilling around the campfire or something, um, I will very safely put a small heater or something in there while still cracking 
um, the windows to let whatever kind of you know, uh, gas or escape or whatever. Um, but just adding that little bit of heat in there for you know 15, 20 minutes, um, and then you come back into the tent and you get in real quick and you zip it up and it stays really warm. It's pretty nice. If you do that, be very, very careful. If your heater falls over, you could have, your truck could be on fire. So be very, very careful if you do want to preheat your tent. So one last tip that I would give you is to lubricate your zippers. Every zipper but the actual zipper that goes around the cover um, is very, very good. The one around the cover uh, tends to be exposed to the elements more just because it's, you know, it's, it's on the cover. And that just really makes the zipper glide and not get, you know, hung up on the tent when you're closing it or uh, deploying it. All right, guys, well, I think that's about it for uh, some tips and tricks uh, of owning a rooftop tent in general. Now we're going to put the phone back on a tripod, set another timer, and see how long it takes to pack up. Oh, I almost forgot a couple really important things to consider when you are packing your tent back up. Um, your poles, your poles right here, make sure you put them back in the bag, obviously, but you can actually store your poles back up inside the tent because the last thing you wanna do is go to camp and you know you forgot to pack your poles. They're like in your garage or something. So make sure to put your poles, um, to store your poles inside the tent. And the last thing I like to do before closing up the tent is just to go around on all the windows and make sure that all of them are zipped up because you don't really want to pack it away when it's when your uh, windows are kind of rolled up. It's just, I don't know, I don't think it's going to store as neat. So make sure you zip all those zippers back um, and it'll, it'll fold up nicely for you. All right, now we'll get the tripod and uh, we'll time this thing. All right, guys, and just like that, uh, it's all packed away. Um, this one took about four minutes and 12 seconds, so pretty much about the same amount of time. And again, I was not um, hurrying at all, so you could do it faster if you wanted to. But uh, yeah, guys, I think that's that's gonna wrap up the video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and thank you guys so much for subscribing. I am almost at 25,000 subscribers. Um, man, I, I refresh that daily just to see how much the channel is growing and it is blowing my mind. So thank you, thank you, thank you guys um, so much for all the continued support uh, with this channel. So um, I will go ahead and tell you, um, I want to tell you guys everything, but uh, I'll leave you with a little bit of a teaser. Um, I have some really, really big things in the works for the channel right now. Uh, some incredible opportunities. Um, some doors are opening, so just be be sure you stick around um, for the next few videos after this one. Um, a lot is going to change to the channel. Um, ah, I just can't wait to share with you guys. So anyway, thank you guys for everything. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. I uh, hope you guys um, stay safe out there and take care. Bye.